Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. I am your host Faraz and today we are doing the contest number 229. This is the problem number 3 of the contest. So you must have read the problem statement. We are given two arrays, nums and multipliers of size n and m respectively. n is given greater than or equal to m. The arrays are one indexed. Um, you are, we are starting with the score 0 and how are we going to calculate the score so we are going to traverse in the multipliers array we will go on each of these values one by one so the first value is 3 we will pick 3 and then we will multiply 3 with either the first element of the nums or the last element of nums we have two options for 3 so whichever gives us um, more value more score we are going to do that operation okay and delete, and then delete that element from the um, array nums then we will go to the second element and do the same step so as we can see here we picked up 3 from the multiplier array and then we multiplied 3 with 3 from the nums array and we deleted 3 and we are remained with 1 and 2 then we picked up 2 and then multiplied 2 with 2 um, 4 is added to the score and the only element that remains in the nums array is 1 and the last element that we have uh, in the multiplier is 1 we multiplied 1, and 1 with 1 and we got the total score as 14 Similarly here, we uh, go to minus 10 and then we multiplied minus 10 with, we had two options, first option was minus 5, second option was 1 and we can see that um, multiplying with minus 5 gives us more score, it gives us a score of 50, otherwise if we multiply it with 1 it will give us a score of negative 10. So we go with uh, minus 5 and then we delete minus 5 and we are uh, left with this array. So this is how we should proceed. Now for those who have practiced a lot they must know that this is a dynamic programming problem and you will have to explore both the possibilities for each element in the multipliers array. Now let us say you are new to this topic and you know nothing about it. So what is the first intuition that most of the people get is they want to go greedy in this. Okay, How greedy? Let me just explain you. Let us say this is the given array multipliers and this is the given array nums. Now the first element is minus 10. Okay. So for minus 10 we have two possibilities, one is minus 5, so minus 10 multiplied by minus 5 it is going to give us 50. The second possibility is minus 10 multiplied by uh, 1 which is going to give us minus 10 as the score. So those who are new they want to go greedy in this and they are going to select this. Okay, This is correct for this particular case so we will be left with as we picked up minus 5 we will be left with minus 3, minus 3 minus 2 or we can just simply delete it from this array okay we are just deleting it now we are left with this array and then we go to the second element minus 5 is the second element so for minus 5 we have two possibilities one possibility is to pick up minus 3 second possibility is to pick up uh, 1 we see both these possibilities so minus 5 multiplied by minus 3 is going to give us 15 and minus 5 multiplied by 1 is going to give us minus 5. Now which one is better? Of course if we pick up minus 3 we will get a score as 15 and that is better. So we picked up minus 3 okay, and added 15 to the score. So these are the values that we are adding in the score. Then we go to 3. This is the third element of multipliers and 3 also have two possibilities. 3 multiplied by minus 3. This is one of the possibility and second possibility is 1. So this is minus 9 and the second possibility is 3 multiplied by 1 which is 3. Now in this case also you will go greedy so you will pick up this so this is going to be added into your answer and as we are picking up 1 so 1 is going to be deleted so we just delete 1 okay but this is a wrong step you will know in a moment why this is a wrong step we are just proceeding and then we will finally calculate the answer let's just proceed and then you will get to know that this was actually a wrong step over here now we go to 4 and we have two possibilities minus 3 and 7 so obviously 7 is going to be better one so 7 4s are 28 so 28 will be added to the score and this will be deleted then we go to 6 for 6 two possibilities minus 3 and minus 2 so 6 is a minus 18 so this is minus 18 other possibility is to select minus 12 so we will be selecting minus 2 because we want minus 12 okay so the final score is going to be minus 12 plus 28 plus 3 plus 50 plus 15 so uh, let me just calculate it quickly 
So 84 is going to be uh, the total score. Okay. But as we can see that in this case the answer is 102. Now as I told you that this was the step uh, that actually went wrong. So instead of selecting 1 I could have select minus 3 here. Right. So if I would have select minus 3 here then I will be adding minus 9 to the score instead of 3. So but I will be left with the possibility of selecting so I will pick up this one right so I will be left with the possibility of selecting these three elements for the upcoming 4 and 6 right so now in this one for 4 I will select 1 so I will get 4 as the score and for 6 I will select 7 6 7s are 42 so then 42 will be added so these are the two values that I will get at the end so it is going to be the total score is going to be 4 plus 42 plus 50 plus 15 plus minus 9 so this is 102 the total score is 102 so this is a better score than previous one and with uh, here we compromised with minus 3 instead of taking 1 okay so minus 3 was a better option here and why was it better because in future it will give us benefit so 6 6 got a chance to be multiplied with 7 because we picked up minus 3 in this case right so this is why we cannot simply uh, go greedy in this these kind of problems we will have to think and we will have to explore all the uh, possibilities for this right so let me tell you how to how to actually look for all the possibilities so the first number that we have is minus 10 so for minus 10 we will explore both the possibilities the first possibility is to uh, select minus 5 so we will add 50 to the score plus whatever we can get by considering this as the array remaining array and this as the remaining array and the other option is to select minus 10 plus whatever we can get with this much array and this much array okay so these kind of questions could be solved using recursion a basic recursion would solve these kind of problems and then we can optimize it if there are some overlapping problems using dynamic programming so let me just first uh, code it out and then explain you with the help of code that uh, what I mean to say okay so I will create a recursive function help it is going to take an index i this index i will be uh, the ith index of the multiplier let me just denote this multiplier by, with a capital M so this is the multiplier I am going to each of these elements of the multiplier the I represent the ith element then I have another vector so this is my vector nums then for nums I will have two indices the start and the end so this is basically the range of my nums so I will take the help of these two pointers this is start this is end so for minus n I have the possibility of multiplying with the start or multiplying with the end element let us say if I multiplied with the start element then I am just going to increment the start element so so as to delete the first element I will just increment the start element to this position okay then if I multiplied it with uh, the end element then I am just going to decrement the end element so my end element will now point to here so this is how I am going to proceed right okay so if i is equal to m dot size it means we reached till the end so in this case I will simply return 0 otherwise I will have two options int option 1 is m of i the current element multiplied by nums of start plus whatever we can get in the future so in the future I will have i plus 1 m nums s plus 1 because I multiplied with s so I'm just going to increment s and and will remain the same so uh, if you cannot understand these kind of things that uh, this basic recursion and everything then uh, you can check my channel uh, on my channel you will get a complete playlist on recursion so uh, you can just find it here all the playlists are well defined here you can just find the playlist on recursion this is recursion so you can um, simply go and try a few problems from this playlist and then you will be able to understand it okay also if you are new to dynamic programming then there's a playlist for dynamic programming as well here it is so 45 questions in the playlist you can just try uh, a few questions from this dynamic programming playlist also there's a tutorial nice tutorial in which I will explain everything hey there everyone welcome back to lead coding 
So this is the basic lecture of the dynamic programming. You can have a look here. And if you are preparing for your coding interviews, you can watch my free interview preparation series, which is currently ongoing. And I will be uploading a lot of lectures in this series. With time, I will keep updating this series. If you are preparing for the coding interviews, you can join it. You can also join the Telegram channel for the uh, live doubt sessions. I will be conducting live doubt sessions as well. And I keep uploading assignment in the series as well. So you can start with this. All right, let's move back to the question now. So the second option is to select the ith index and multiply it with nums of end. In this case, again, i plus one, because we are done multiplying the ith element, then m, then nums, s, and end minus one in this case. Okay, so these are the two options. We can return the maximum of these two options, option one, comma, option two. Uh, let me just try to call this function from the main function which is given to us. Return help of, I will be starting with the zeroth index, then m, then nums, and starting s is zero, and end is equal to nums dot size minus one. So it is nums dot size minus one. Let me just try to run this one uh, on the given test cases. So it is giving me correct answer for both the test cases which is given to us. So this is the right solution, but this solution is going to give you TLE. It is going to give you time limit exceeded uh, because the complexity of this solution is exponential. For each of the index i, you have two options to go with and hence the complexity is exponential in this case. So how can we optimize this? So if we look, if we have a look here, this is a dynamic programming problem and there are lots of repetitions here. You can just draw the recursion tree and you will get to know there are a lot of repetitions here. So you can just store those uh, repetitions using memoization. Okay, I'm not going to draw the entire um, recursive tree, uh, but you can have a look here. So let us say you are at the zeroth index and your start is zero and your end is zero, one, two, three, four, five. Then uh, you have one option to go with i is equal to 1, start is equal to 1, and end is 5. Second option is i1, start is equal to 0, and end is equal to 4. Okay. Then from here you have other option. The option is to go to second index, start is equal to 2, and is equal to 5. And one option is to go to the second index, start is remaining same, and end will go to 4. And here you would have one option to go to the second index, then and the second option is to go to the second index, start will remain same and end will become three. Okay. Then let us explore it a bit further. So here, third index, start is three and will become, and will remain same. Then third index, start will remain same and end will become four. So similarly here, start this is the third index start is going to be 2 here and end start will be 2 and will remain 4 and third index start will remain same and end will become 3 similarly here two possibilities the first possibility is to go to the third index start 2 and 4 and third index start 1 and 3 so we can see this and this is overlapping right so this is repeating again this and this is repeating so there will be a lot of repetition we will have to compute all these things again and again so instead of doing that we are just going to store them once we calculate them we are just going to store them so we can create a dynamic programming so we can just uh, do it using memoization for that I'm going to create a DP array int DP um, in the DP um, I will have three things to store the first is I the second thing is S and the third thing is E. So let us look at the ranges. So start can go from 10 raised to the power 0 to 10 raised to the power uh, 5. So this will be 10 raised to the power 5. And similarly, N can go to 10 raised to the power 5 again, and our I can go to 10 raised to the power 3. But this much memory we cannot simply allocate. Okay. The maximum that we can go is up to 10 raised to the power 7. What can we do here? So can we uh, try to eliminate the end here? 
how can we eliminate end let us say we are at certain i okay so let us say we are at i equal to 4 it means that we have already done computing four elements before this 0 1 2 and 3 these indices we have already done so we have compute four elements already okay and let us say our start is um, at the index 2 that means we have used the index 0 and 1 so when i is 4 and start is 2 that means we have used two elements from the start and in total we have done computation for four elements that means two elements we have used from the end as well right so we can compute the number of elements that we have used from end so that is going to be i minus start this is going to give us the number of elements that we have used from the end now if you want to calculate end so end will be equal to total number of elements that is nums dot size minus this thing the number of elements that we have used minus one so this will be end so we removed end from our recursive calls so um, this is just going to reduce the complexity of uh, dynamic programming so we don't have to pass the end here we can simply remove end then we are left with i and s now the range of i is from 0 to 10 raised to power 3 and the range of s is also going to be from 0 to 10 raised to power 3 because we can only use at most 10 raised to power 3 elements okay so we can create a dp array here int dp of size 10 raised to power 3 cross 10 raised to power 3 and then mem set is mem set dp minus 1 size of dp you can also use two for loops to initialize all the elements of the dp with minus 1 so um, we can just compute it over here if dp of i and s is not equal to minus 1 it means we have already computed it so return dp of i and s otherwise just simply store in this before returning just simply store it so that we don't have to compute it the next time so um, let me try to pass this dp as well let me just create it um, global you can even pass this into the recursive call but I just want to reduce the code so um, it is giving me error because I am passing E here let me just try to run this now it is giving me correct answer let me just submit and it got accepted so what do you think the complexity of this solution is of course we know about the space complexity it is um, 1000 into 1000 which is 10 raised to the power 6 we can easily allocate 10 raised to the power 6 memory so this is fine what is the uh, time complexity so how can you know about the time complexity basically in this entire uh, dynamic programming we are just filling all the cells of dp and we are never recomputing it so the time complexity also becomes n square that is 10 uh, raised to the power 3 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 3 we are just simply filling the uh, dp array right so that is why big O of n square is uh, actually m big O of m square is the complexity space complexity and big O of m square is the time complexity now if you guys understand this solution make sure to leave your likes and make sure to leave your comments also make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want more such content in future thank you guys